Grace, mercy, and peace to you from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Last week, Christ began his third major discourse or teaching block in the Gospel of St. Matthew. He is speaking in parables, allegorical comparisons. Now, last week's parable was the sower and the seed, and Christ's focus was on the four types of soil representing the four types of hearts. Well, today Christ speaks the parable of the wheat and the tares. Now, unlike last week's parable, there are two sowers and there are two different seeds. And indeed, it's a rather sinister kind of tale. The evil seed is a weed, likely darnel or tares. It looks and grows just like wheat. And it takes a keen and experienced eye to notice the difference. In fact, the difference really isn't apparent till after the plant is mature. But tares are worthless, good for nothing other than being burned in the fire lest their seed spread and cause even more damage. Now this scheme of sowing weeds among the wheat is one of patient and diabolical hatred. The enemy would have to divert some of his own resources to harving this worthless seed in the previous season. And then he'd have to set aside storage area for the tares until the following season. And even then, the enemy would have to wait for the end of the growing season before the effect of the bad seed would begin to take its toil. Indeed, the enemy might have to wait two or more years for his plan to have its disastrous effect. It's truly a cowardly, dishonorable, cruel, and extreme expression of hatred. Characteristics that accurately describe the great enemy, the devil. And again, Christ provides the explanation. The one who sows the good seed is the son of man. The field is the world, and the good seed is the sons of the kingdom. The weeds are the sons of the evil one, and the enemy who sowed them is the devil. Now the sower is the same as with our last parable. He is the son of man. And the seed last week put its roots down deep into the good soil to produce a yield. In today's parable, we see that the yield is sons of the kingdom. The good word of God puts its roots down deep into the heart of man and produces Christians. The bad seed, however, produces quite the opposite. It puts its roots into the heart and produces sons of the evil one, the hypocrites that plague the visible church, that physical congregation of men and women throughout the world. But this parable explains one of the more puzzling behaviors of humankind. People will often strongly disagree with the teachings of an organization, yet still want to remain a member. They could join an organization with which they agree, but they don't. They would rather join the organization with which they disagree and try to change it. It doesn't make sense. Or does it? Pick any biblical teaching that causes controversy. The Bible teaches that Jesus is the one and only way of salvation, that no one can contribute in any way to all or even to part of their salvation. The Bible teaches that the Holy Spirit works through the external word and not through internal feelings. The Bible teaches that marriage is between one man and one woman. It teaches that men and women should not have a physical relationship unless they are married. The Bible teaches that all life is sacred, even the life not yet born or the life that suffers near its end of days. The Bible teaches that men are to serve in the office of holy ministry and that both men and women are to receive that service with joy. 
The Bible teaches that it is dangerous to give the Lord's Supper to those who refuse to repent of their sins, who refuse to forgive others, or who cannot examine themselves. Now many of these teachings disturb our culture. And sadly, there are many denominations that find these teachings likewise offensive, so offensive that they simply ignore what the Bible says and do what they want to do anyway. You know, we don't have to like what the Bible says, but we're still supposed to hear it, receive it, and live it. Rather than railing against God's word to the delight of the old Adam, we are to subdue him, to drown him daily in the waters of holy baptism so that the new man may arise and live before God in righteousness and purity forever. As Christ says in the Gospel of St. Luke, chapter 11, Blessed are those who hear the word of God and keep it. But here's the point. If someone disagrees so strongly with what the Bible teaches, they can find plenty of denominations to join. Why then do so many insist on joining or remaining members of a congregation with whom they so strongly disagree? I'm not speaking solely of the Lutheran Church Missouri Synod. This kind of struggle happens in every denomination when certain points of doctrine are found to be distasteful or out of step with the zeitgeist. The tares scheme and struggle in an effort to get faithful denominations to fall away from the clear teachings of the Bible. It's seemingly not enough that they break the Word of God, but they want everyone else to break it along with them. Even though they are some of the most divisive people in the church body, they accuse the faithful of being divisive. It's happened before in our church body in the 1970s with John Teaching of Concordia Seminary, or even more recently in 2015 with Matthew Becker of Valparaiso University. It's happened before, and it will happen again. In fact, it will keep happening over and over in large and small ways until the end of the age. But you might ask, and rightly so, why don't these people join the denomination with which they agree? Why are they causing such grief, such division? Our church simply wants to be faithful to the Word of God. Well, Christ gives the answer in today's parable. The weeds are the sons of the evil one, and the enemy who sowed them is the devil. The devil intentionally sows his bad seed in the field of the Son of Man. It's a very sad truth that Christ teaches. He teaches that even the most faithful denomination and congregation will have unbelievers in it. But that is the lot of the visible church. The devil sows his lies in every church. Among the wheat are hidden the tares. Now, if you're squirming in your pew, take heart. The law has done its work and is bringing forth the fruits of repentance. In truth, there are times when all of us have acted like tares, have succumbed to those lies. How often do we try to get what we want, to scheme for it even, without giving a thought to what the Bible says? How often do we complain that we don't feel heard when in fact we refuse to listen to the Word of God? Rather than loving God above all things, we love ourselves. Instead of loving our neighbor, we seek to exploit him. And when God's Word teaches something that we don't like, we try every hook in the book, every trick, every scheme or rationalization to get what we want instead of what God demands. And that part of us that acts like the tares should terrify us, 
Truly it should, because Christ says, the harvest is the close of the age, and the reapers are angels. Just as the weeds are gathered and burned with fire, so will it be at the close of the age. The Son of Man will send his angels, and they will gather out of his kingdom all causes of sin and all lawbreakers, and throw them into the fiery furnace. In that place there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Christ declares quite clearly that the hypocrites in the visible church will suffer an eternal fate like that of a fiery furnace, a place of weeping and gnashing of teeth. Thanks be to God that he has sent his Son to be our Savior, to be the good seed for us. He became the ultimate grain of wheat. And on that first Palm Sunday, he said, The hour has come for the Son of Man to be glorified. Truly, truly, I say to you, unless a grain of wheat falls into the earth and dies, it remains alone. But if it dies, it bears much fruit. When Christ took our human flesh upon himself, he became a seed just like us. A seed like us, but one that never behaved like a tear. One that never sinned. Nevertheless, he took the punishment of sin upon himself for us. For your sake, O tear, He was crucified and then buried, just like a seed. And while he hung on the cross, he suffered that fiery furnace for you. He endured the weeping and the gnashing of teeth. He endured it all so that the tares of this world might be converted into wheat. When the servants in the parable wanted to pull the tares from the field, the master said, No! lest in gathering the weeds you root up the wheat along with them. Let both grow together and tell the harvest. Now the word that the master uses to say, let both grow, permit them to grow, that word is a fete. It's the imperative form of afiemi. You're probably saying, it's all Greek to me. In this case, you'd be right. But this word, afiemi, it means to allow, to let, to permit, to forgive. It is as if the master was saying, forgive them to grow together. Forgive them as you, O Father, have forgiven us. Yes, this is the same word, afiemi, that Christ uses when he teaches us to pray in Luke chapter 11. And forgive our sins as we ourselves forgive everyone who is indebted to us. Here in the Master we see the patience, the long-suffering of the Lord. Forgive them to grow together so that the Holy Spirit may work through the proclamation of the good seed of God's Word and convert the tares the sons of the evil one, into wheat, the sons of the kingdom. He is patient and long-suffering because he is love, steadfast love. God, our Savior, desires all people to be saved and to come to the knowledge of the truth. And so it is that he stays the hand of the reapers, Now when Christ rose from the dead and ascended into heaven, he poured out the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit comes to us, tares, and offers to convert us into wheat. He offers the forgiveness of sins to us through his word. The Holy Spirit calls us by the gospel, and we become wheat. He bespeaks us righteous. His living and creative word makes us so. He declares, and so it is. And that is the power of his word working in the means of grace. 
And as Christ says at the close of today's parable, then the righteous will shine like the sun in the kingdom of their father. He who has ears, let him hear. And the peace of God which passes all understanding, guard your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Amen.